everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and these are my April Digi Kits. They are brand new. I have five of them to show you, and I'm also going to show you a set of examples that you can easily make. These are designed to be easy to use in your junk journals, launching pad ideas, and you can take them and run with them any way you like. Okay, so the first Digi Kit of April 2022 is called Vanilla Rose Signature Pages Digi Kit. And Signature Page is what I call the regular pages inside your junk journal. Maybe you want to um, have uh, some pretty printed pages that are pale enough, soft enough, light enough so that you could still write over them. But um, maybe you just don't like looking at a blank page. So let me show you what I did with these. And this is how I print them out. I print these out on 20 pound cards, um, 20 pound copy paper. So it's regular copy paper from the printer. And um, I'll just show you them as I go through here. And that way they're the right weight for a signature page. Makes it nice and easy. These are um, the vanilla rose is uh, white and uh, cream colored roses. And uh, just a, a nice variety of different colored pages, all uh, similar. Uh, in tone and theme, but then I also went ahead and printed on the back so that when you flip your pages in your journal, they will also be on the back. So I, you know, just a little tip, you don't have to do that. You can print them one-sided um, and just do something else with the other white page on the back. Or you could actually, if you had, this is only one side and this is only one side, and you have them meeting in your journal, you could technically glue the two pages together if you printed them all out on one side. So you have options. Uh, but these are the signature pages and that is what they look like. Uh, they're very fun to use and I'll show you an example of using those as well. But we're gonna go through the uh, first kit, the kits first. The next one is called Orchid Aura. Let me actually zoom in for you. This is to sue me. We go back to the regular Zoom. Okay, here we go. Orchid Aura, beautiful, beautiful, very, very old images of gorgeous orchids. You can use these in so many different ways. Um, journal cards, journal tucks, journal pockets, um, corner tucks, uh, just flaps, flips, you name it. You're gonna have a million and one ways to do this. So with spring coming, I thought it might be fun to show you some beautiful uh, artwork uh, from many, many days gone by, which I think it's a wonderful thing to bring it back into uh, viewing for uh, folks nowadays, because otherwise we would never see these things. They just disappear into the mist. Um, but somebody painstakingly, beautifully drew these, and they're all illustrations. So there you go. That is Orchid Aura. Not easy to say, but I think it gets the point across. <laughs> okay. The next one is a Victorian classic. Many of the Victorian... Um, imagery, the trade cards and things like that uh, coalesce around a certain uh, theme or topic. And this particular Victorian um, uh, digi kit is designed uh, around perfume. So now I technically called it uh, Perfumes Through Time because there's a few in here that are not technically Victorian. Um, so instead of splitting hairs, I just said, oh, I thought they, the images were pretty enough, like this one is not truly Victorian, but uh, I thought they were pretty enough that they, they belonged in here. So um, there we go. Uh, gorgeous colognes, eau de toilette, perfume, uh, kind of put them all into one beautiful category. So if you're doing uh, romantic or girly or, um, you know, pinkish styles, this would be very nice. Uh, le perfumerie, parfumerie. Yes, so there's uh, French references, German references in here. Uh, evening in Paris, that's right. That's how your love life will be if you just spritz one little spritz of this little fantastic bottle. All right, the next one is called Fairies Daydreams. And there are some amazing pictures of very happy little um, fairies of all different types. And these are all from across the time. Uh, some are extremely old and they uh, I give you a lot of different examples and these are actually very easy to cut out. There are some just vanilla black and white ones and there's some beautiful color imagery uh, but they all have beautiful fairies or uh, tales from uh, fairy tales and things like that. There we go and we slowly move so you can get a good bird's eye view. And they are from old, beautiful books 
Uh, just amazing, amazing things. Okay. And just giving you a little peek see here so you can get an idea. Some cute, some funny. Oh, the next one is an interesting concept. I called it the old library. And since we're working with books, I thought it would be fun to introduce a digikit that uh, expressed the feeling of an old, dusty, mystical, uh, mysterious library. Maybe uh, something along the lines of Harry Potter type feel, uh, old world writing from the books back then, a book cover, some beautiful uh, pictures from uh, very, very old uh, libraries, uh, things that are found in libraries, books, uh, book presses, little note cards from the libraries. These were interesting. Uh, pictures of different places, and here we go. Places where information is stored. Um, since we are the gatherers of junk and uh, heralding junk to its highest, uh, uh, you know, situation here, um, maybe we can uh, enjoy the fact that we used to, we, I mean, I guess some people still go to libraries, right? That's a thing, right? But I'm sure it's uh, waning in its um, experience, but it's still a wonderful feeling if you just want to go and be with some old books. And often they get rid of a lot of their old books. So while you're there, you might do a drive-by and act at the counter and just ask, hey, are you? do you have any discard books? Do you have any old library cards? Do you have anything like that that um, a junk journaler might just love? So there you go. So this uh, month, April 2022, you just back up here a little bit, uh, Vanilla Rose Signature Pages. So there's one signature page. And then there is Old Library, Fairies Daydream. Okay, some of these are upside down. Uh, perfumes through time and then there is orchid aura so there you go let's see how I uh, used some of these um, tried to create some uh, unique and different ways to use these so you could see some examples and okay so I'm working in this journal right now and I wanted to show you this concept I haven't done this before but I actually took some of the fairy imagery now let me come down closer to you here I am, I'm closer to you now. And on the spine dangle that we made the other day, I took some of the fairy imagery and I put an eyelet through it with a gourd pin and just attached it to a very chunky um, spine dangle. So there's a lot of things that you can do um, that are maybe a little bit different, a little different and off the cuff. These can be removable. Somebody can use them in their journal, um, write little notes on them, keep them here, little secret notes, whatever they like, all sorts of possibilities. So you could coat this, uh, uh, what I almost want to think of as a Christmas tree, you're decorating it. So you could do whatever you like on there. And that's just one little fun idea. And I tied a little piece of uh, uh, rope twine there as well, just for fun. Give it a little punch. Okay, I'm going to remove this because it's very easily removable and put it over there. All right. And I did mark them. I marked the spot. So yes, I know. I know, right? Okay. So the first one is this envelope that I made. I took a piece of uh, cardstock that I had uh, uh, dyed a bluish color and I went ahead and I used, um, this is from Fairies. And what I want to show you with this design is that you don't necessarily have to stay within the borders all the time. It is okay to extend beyond borders just to give yourself a little bit of variety. Go free, run wild, it's okay, it's just paper. And uh, I did the um, stenciling with my tree stencil and uh, if anybody's looking for that, it is in my Amazon shop. I always get a lot of questions about that. So yes, I used my tree stencil on here in several different colors. I think a blue and a green. Um, actually, it could have been blended together because I may have used the same dauber and cross-pollinated. Cross uh, here is a little um, uh, vocabulary card. And inside of it, as we open this up, is this adorable little blue. And I was just working with a little bit of blue themes here. I cross-pollinated a little bit of colors, but with uh, other colors, but you'll, you'll see as we go. But this is from old Victorian times. It says, dear, dear love, uh, wish, uh, I wish that's true. I wish for you. So they came up with the cutest little things. And I think this is a little card. Um, uh, looks like somebody had, uh, from Gerald. Okay, so he signed the back of it. Gerald and some numbers here. Don't know what the numbers are, but there it's from Gerald uh, Luce or Seuss. 
Um, so just interesting finds that you come across. And if you don't have those things, um, there's a million and one things that you can put in here. You can put little pieces of paper, a book page, a notepad, of um, playing cards, old tickets, all sorts of fun things. Now here, I made a very fun and very easy um, altered paper clip. And this is from the Perfumes Through Time. And I just wanted to show you this technique because it, it's just fun to rough up the edges on these. But you don't, you don't need any fancy this or that. I mean, if you have an, um, some kind of craft knife or scissor, um, you can just kind of come along and do that. And it just really roughs it up nicely. Just gives you like, if, if you don't want it to be, you know, too straight and you just want a little bit of something, there you go, you got, that ages it immediately. Now you can go on, on there with uh, inks and put a little ink on there with black or brown or green and that'll age it even more. But that's kind of a nice, a nice pop against the color here with the blue. I think I'm gonna leave it like that, I like that. So this was a very simple um, uh, paper clip to do. And if we have time, maybe I'm gonna show you that, at, how we did that at the end, because it's super easy. And uh, anybody can definitely do that, any skill level. Um, you're gonna be surprised how easy, it's ridiculously easy, it's silly. Um, okay, so on the back here, this is a picture from the um, uh, fairy, Fairy's Daydream. Um, working on over 150 different digi kits right now, so I'm, 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 I'm trying to get creative with the names and also make them easy for you to find. So I'm, I'm working on trying to put the main name of the thing in the, as the first word. That's, that's my goal, because I think when people look up birds, they want to see bird something. So I'm, I'm trying to, it's not always possible, but I, I do try because sometimes I have a lot of in the same category. I just tuck some fun things in here and here's some examples of things that you can uh, tuck in here. You don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff. And the idea with the DigiKits is to make your life easier. You don't have to use DigiKits at all in a junk journal. You can have a boatload of fun and just create things, use book pages, use whatever you like, um, uh, music, paper, all sorts of fun. But it, it's these are designed so that maybe you want to follow a certain theme or give an essence or uh, um, or make it easy on yourself. Maybe your um, you your hands don't work that well and it's not easy to fussy cut a lot of things out. Digi kits um, in my kits are generally very easy to cut out. Uh, I try to do my best to align them on the page. So you just do a few simple trims and you're done and you're ready and you're out the door. And I just put some fun little things in here so you can see examples of things that you can tuck in. This is actually a page torn out of another journal. I found it in the thrift store and it had this pretty little design on the top. And I thought, oh, you're coming home with me because I hold a whole stack of these now um, for a very good uh, deal. This is an old um, matchbook cover that had birds. And I think I, I bought a collection that had birds and butterflies and they're vintage, but I just think they're so pretty. Um, so I just tucked that in there. So I'm trying to get you to think of other things that you can tuck in there. Uh, these little quarter um, uh, rolls, these little things that you can buy by the bag or by the box. Um, you can make uh, all sorts of fun things in here. You can leave them as is, or you can turn them into little pockets and things like that. Um, a lot of fun to be had with those. And here is another uh, one of the fairy um, digi kit. So I just left it in here as a uh, journal card so they could write on the back something simple. And uh, there you go. So let me just tuck these little guys back in here. All right. I also nestled this on some, this is actually gauze. So if you're having a hard time finding cheesecloth, uh, think about gauze because uh, you might find that in the, uh, uh, in your thrift store or in your, um, pharmacy or something like that or you know good old amazon uh, might be easier to find than cheesecloth cheesecloth is not um hard to find but it um to to find it as a at a reasonable price for the amount you want to use in your junk journals um some of us use a lot of cheesecloth and some of us just use a little bit there's some stenciling on here as well okay so inside uh, i went ahead and this is a very simple construct this was a, just a piece of cardstock that i dyed blue and i glued the edges together that was pretty much it and then I just cut this circle punch here that was with a, a small, like I think a two inch circle punch. And I put in here some of the perfume um, DigiKit pictures. These are from Perfumes Through Time and uh, just very pretty imagery. And they can write on the backs of these little journal cards. I put a notepad. Oh, that's my birthday. And that was just by chance. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, 
that is uh, something that uh, you can tuck in, which is a nice little thing that they can read on one page. Maybe some pretty note paper. This came from another little journal that had no writing on it, and I thought it was pretty and blue, and it could go nicely in this journal. And here is uh, a torn out piece of page from a... Um, uh, graph paper and I thought that was pretty too and then I put a piece of um, old uh, very very caramelized note um, book page in there because it contrasted so beautifully uh, with the whites so um, remember to play off your contrast it's a lot of fun and a little special find I put in here this very um, 1913 a very old envelope and it had um, I put in here also a little journal card because I had a journal card that matched the color of the stamp and it came from the perfume, the Perfumes Through Time collection. And I just thought that looked really pretty together with that. Uh, but also this particular envelope had the actual letter in it and they're much more rare to find if you can find those. Um, and they're usually more expensive, but if you find those, um, this one apparently was unclaimed. Um, very good finds. So keep an eye out for those out in the world when you're looking. And uh, just to take a quick peek at what this uh, letter said, which I thought was just a little interesting. Okay, it said, uh, I'll just read the first couple lines for you. Dear bro, I like how that started already. Now I had to know what uh, uh, was said. I have been searching uh, the records for your information ever since I received your first letter, but can't find anything that will help you that I can see. The old records from Deer Creek Lodge are not in our possession. I suppose they must have been destroyed years ago. So, and it goes on, and I'll let the person, uh, you know, read the rest of that story as they, as they uh, um, go through this um, junk journal. But uh, it's very interesting that they were actually collecting old papers and old um, information and things like that back then. Um, so information, it, it, we are fascinated by uh, just different, what happened way back then? And, and to them, they had a way back then to themselves. Like it was further back, you know, than we, than we think of as a way back then. There's way back then and then there's really, really way back then. You know what I mean? <laughs> So we haven't changed much. You know, we think we're all so different and modern and uh, ha ha ha. No, no, not so much. We're curious. We're curious about those who came before us. And we're curious about where we will go from here. So let's see where we will go from here in this book. Okay. So, um... Uh, let's see, okay, so here is another one. Here's my great page marker. Uh, I went along with the, um... That's Holly. Hi, Holly. Good morning, my African Grey. Um, I did some more eyelet placing here, and um, I just put three of them together and tied. Now, this last one, I glued onto the page, so I technically made it a page tab. So that's a different way that you can use a concept like this. Um, it may be a little uh, flip through, look through, but you can actually glue the last one on, and that can become a page tab for you. So just something a little different to think about, and kind of like a nice uh, open space for uh, folks to come and, and uh, write something and look. And they can, they can flip these up if they want to do that. And oh, you know what? Hang on. Okay, I do get this question a lot, so that's why I'm going to address it. Um, there's a very easy way. This is a, the regular crocodile. This is not the crocodile too big bite. It only has a small bite, really. And actually, the bites are up here. Um, but uh, what I wanted to show you was eyelet and placement. And um, I do recommend the ones from We Are Memory Keepers because I know they will work and you won't have a problem. But I went through a big learning curve on how to use an eyelet setter. And I'm just going to give you the, the 10 second explanation of what I look for. Okay. What matters is... Um, if they have, some have perforations, like little breakthrough spots like that, which makes it easier to place the eyelet because the, the back is already, the, the break has already started for you. But that doesn't mean that you cannot use this kind that is smooth. The whole thing is if you're going to use it on a, um, a thin piece of paper, you don't want a long shank. And the shank is, um, do you? The shank is the length of this part. That's the shank. You don't want a long one because you're only going through a thin piece of paper or cardstock. So let's just grab a, um, here's one. Uh, okay, we'll do this one. Okay, so the biggest thing to remember is uh, nipple on top, fly, silver flying saucer on the bottom. Nipple on top, silver flying saucer on the bottom. That, when you, these two come together, that's how you want your eyelet squasher to be placed. Eyelet setter, eyelet squasher. I call it an eyelet squasher. Okay, the cutting places on this particular crocodile 
Let me just put that here. So, nope, it doesn't 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 say crocodile, does it? Nope, nope, doesn't. It should. Um, okay, so this is. I always I marked mine with uh, nail polish so I could remember which one I use 99% of the time, which is the three sixteenths. It comes in here. You can see it. Can you see it? Three. That says three sixteenths. Your other choice is probably on this side. Oh, I can barely see it, but it's one eighth. Okay, so three sixteenths is the bigger one. So remember, okay, now this is where it gets weird, okay? Oh, that's the one of the big, I'm gonna punch the hole now. You wanna see how the hole comes to the, there's the puncher, yeah, I know. Okay, so uh, let's just punch it. Let's just put it where we want it. And we we'll punch it. Okay, so we have a hole. Okay, so, so far so good. All right, now that's a three sixteenths hole, okay? Now look at how this is oriented. I've got the nipple on the bottom and the flying saucer on top. Nope, you want to flip it over and have the nipple on the top and the flying saucer on the bottom. And then when you place, this is one without um, the perforations, okay? I'm going to place that in there. It's the 3 16th size. Make sure you get the 3 16th inch size. I don't know what that transfers into millimeters. There is one that's comparable in millimeters. I just don't know what the number is offhand. But... Uh, Nipple on the top, silver uh, flying disc on the bottom. All right, and then that's where we're going to squeeze. Okay, here, and and this this is actually makes you extremely powerful. You like I, I like the Hulk with this. Okay, so now let me show you. Okay, flipping over, it's split. That's right. It's designed to do that. So let's take a look at one. Let's do it again. Now let me find one of the the splitty ones. Here it is. Okay. Okay, that has the little teeth on it, which is perfectly fine. They, they work just as well, um, but it, it's, you don't have to have one or the other. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so now I'm gonna go for my 3 16 again, because I marked it. I'm gonna punch a hole. Ow, I just pinched myself. Okay, uh, ow, I just pinched myself again. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Oh, if you find like you can't move this thing, that means that you, the lock has slipped in place. There's this little thing that, uh, um, it's like a lock. It is a lock. It's not like a lock. It is a lock. So if it's over this way, sticking out that way, it's locked and you're not going to be able to open. You'll be like, I broke it. I broke it. No, you didn't. You just squeeze again and you push and it pops out this way. That means open. Okay. So now you're open. Now you can punch your hole. Okay. I'm trying to give you all the tips I can think of. All right. Now you're going to place your eyelet as you're looking down on it into the hole, your 3 16 inch eyelet, okay, from different manufacturers. I think they're, as long as the, the size is 3 16 with the same size shank, like regular shank for paper, not like a grommet or something that has a very long shank, but you just want regular, regular shank. Um, now we're going to, now remember I punched it this way because that was there, but I had to rotate it to get my nipple on top <laughs> okay and my silver flying saucer on the bottom okay so I'm going in and I'm just going to punch you see it wants to come out don't let it you get it in there and you squeeze okay and then you're done okay now we're gonna look oh and it flayed just like we wanted it to so they pretty much look the same so don't get all freaked out if you have solid shanks or um um uh, split, split shanks. It will all work. So there you go. And you can do all sorts of fun things with these. So that was that. <laughs> okay. So let's keep going here. All right. What else? Where's the next one? It's way in deep, way in deep. Okay. Here it is. And this one I used from the fairies daydream. I put it on the, uh, this is actually butterfly oasis signature pages digikit boy that's a long name isn't it but I thought the contrast was nice with the white and the cream and then I added some what is that you say blue I'll put some light on it Pam blue liquid pearls in ocean blue and these don't take that long to dry so you can dot 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 like go do something for a minute or like five minutes or something and you're pretty much ready to go then I put some stickles on and we all know that stickles take a long time to dry I just wanted to put some on the fairy's wings for fun and um I guess it's some nice light action. And uh, so I pulled out my blow dryer, my, like my little heat gun thing. I'll show you the one I use. Nothing too exciting. Some El Cheapo one I think I got from uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels, but just this guy, an embossing heat gun 
same thing. It's like a low blow, but hot sort of thing. Uh, if you use a blow dryer, sometimes you can blow everything to kingdom come, um, but it still will do the same concept. If you hold on to everything, you're okay. Um, so I used this as a page tab. That's what I'm trying to say is uh, it doesn't have to be a small page tab. You can make big page tabs out of uh, any little picture or a uh, playing card or a ticket or something like that. So get inventive, get creative, and uh, you can make page cards. Oh, and what I did was I made it as a wraparound. That's what I did. Um, so it was actually two pictures beside each other in the digi kit and I just cut them out as two and then I folded them in half. They were on the same row. I'll show you the example. Probably don't have another example like that. Okay, I could just use this as an example. Um, so say these two I cut out like in one block and then I just folded it there and then I just created a wraparound on the page. So that's very easy to do. It's another way that you can use your um, pictures that you come across in, in, your, in your travels. And also, um, let's carry on to show you a couple more things here. Oh, this is a very easy idea and always fun. I always like this. This is a good um, uh, rock solid uh, thing to do. Uh, sideways pockets. So I just had these beautiful images of the um, Orchid's Aura, Orchid Aura Digi Kit. Use two of those. Um, they're just gorgeous. And um, uh, then I just tucked some fun things in here, like here is an old ticket from 1947. Here is an old, oh, Dr. Thomas's eclectic, ec eclectric, eclectric oil. Boy, that, that sounds, uh, oh, see, there's a whole explanation of it. I wonder what this does. Oh, it's good for toothaches, earaches, backache, lameness, coughs, hoarseness, colds, sore throat, deafness, pain of burn, scald, and neuralgia. Just saying, this is good stuff. I mean, we should all go buy buckets of this, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, okay. Croup, it will cease in five minutes. Well, look at that. I'll be darned. Dr. Thomas's um, eclectic oil, eclectic oil is only 50 cents per bottle. And the bottle will go farther than half a dozen of in an ordinary medicine. I mean, this stuff, I mean, who could have a, have a household without some Dr. Thomas's eclectic oil? And it comes on a pretty card. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. And uh, so these are just uh, some things I find along the way. Here's, this is a new card. It has a little flower on it, a eucalyptus. And uh, it's just a pretty writing space. Um, here's some old tickets. Uh, this one I think is from Niagara Falls. And this is from the Good for One Ride on a Whip. I think I had one of those before. Um, but uh, yeah, so fun things. I'm just trying to show you. You can uh, tuck anything you want in there. Um, old ephemera, interesting old book pages, old um, uh, letters, or you can do all new stuff and make it look old, or you can just put all new stuff in there too. So you are never stuck. And um, I get a lot of questions about, is this okay to put in a junk journal? Or if I don't um, use an old book cover, is it not really a junk journal? Absolutely not. It, pretty much everything is a junk journal if you call it a junk journal, um, because this is, uh, it's play. It's totally up to you with your play and, and what you do with it and where you take it. Okay, so this one, um, okay, as you can see how it works, it is technically working as a belly band that has three pictures that are just glued to each other, glued on this side, glued here, glued here, and then glued on this side. And then you can make a really cool cascading belly band. So that is that concept, and this is with the Orchid Aura. That's another fun way you can use the same things in different ways. And in here I just put, a, this is a really cool old uh, railroad engineer um, envelope. And um, here's a letter um, about the Theodore Roosevelt issue stamp from 1955. So I thought that was kind of fun. And uh, so just, you know, kind of crazy things you come across. If you kind of come across old receipts or, or whatever have you, or like I said, new stuff, not a problem. All right, and here we go. Now we're just gonna take a peek over uh, to P to what the last one is right here. Here we go. Okay, and um, so this I used um, two from the Orchid Aura, and this is one from the Old Library. Yes, thank you. And uh, the two from the Orchid Aura, these are glued in pocket style. So I just put some pretty uh, pieces of old book page, and this is from an old uh, poem book. And I just thought they were kind of fun in there and did a little bit of uh, stamping. A little bit of inking 
And uh, over here, this is actually, I had the leftover pieces from these, so I decided to trim this edge of this page. See, this page originally was like this, and I thought, oh, let me just fold it in. And I folded it in, and then I stuck this here. It does uh, stick out, um, but I just think it looks kind of cool because I like breaking the page. I just, where the natural edges and borders are, if you can encourage yourself to like go beyond them. Just, there's a whole world out there. There is, there's a whole world out there. Um, there's nothing wrong with containing everything inside the book so it never comes out. There's something I'm missing that I did. Did I show you? No, I didn't show you that. Where is it? Where is it? I marked it. Ha, ha. Okay, I can find it. Here it is. No, I didn't mark it. Okay. I was telling myself, Pam, mark it, mark it. Um, okay, so this, I just clipped it onto a page as a removable, but it is a little um, writing booklet. But instead of being a normal little booklet, um, it uses the old library theme. So let me just show you some of the pictures in here. Its pockets are actually on the outside and it has little writing papers and uh, vanilla rose pages with some old book pages and things like that on the inside. I'll show you the back. I'll back up a little bit so you can see it better. I just want to give you a little close eye. Uh, view. So pockets don't always have to be on the inside of what you're making. They can be on the outside. And uh, I broke the edge here. I uh, The picture was bigger than my pocket, so I went above. So I didn't glue the back of the, po uh, the part that stuck above, obviously. I just uh, kept it below my... Uh, uh, and that is not um, technically a pocket. It is sealed on there, but the pocket is the... E I took uh, the paper... Oh, I got one. Okay. I took the paper... And I just folded it up. Okay. So the paper was originally, let's see, like maybe it was this big. And then I took, um, no, I took it like this. Yeah, uh, this is what I was using for my book. Okay, the shape of the book. And then I took the bottom and I folded it up. And then I folded it up. And that gave me the um, the pockets on the bottom so I probably should show you that no better better way maybe we'll make one of these together uh, okay so what did I put in here I put a little stamp stamps are always fun they um, really harken back to a lot of things for people here is a, I just found these are probably new new old stock there was just uh, tags I found I came across somewhere in my travels it's a beautiful piece of stationery and it's always nice to give people extra writing space and you can hand make these or you can buy them if you come along and find them as treasures, that's awesome. But if not, you can just make your own. And also, um, uh, since this is a picture of an old library, I um, got a real old library card. Uh, I love <laughs> coping with an alcoholic parent. Yeah, there was a nice one to put in there, Pam. That's very nice. Um, and uh, here's an old library picture and just the word imagine and an old library pocket. Actually, I think this is new. Um, but I, I aged it to make it look like it was old. So yeah, that's what I did. And then this row of stamps, which I think is kind of cool. These look really cool if you glue them on the side of a page and use that as a page tab, or you can use it as the topper, you know, or bottomer, or you can use it as a little pocket. A lot of fun with those. All right, so let's just tuck these little guys back in here because they were just so much fun. And um, then we're going to go inside the book. And uh, I'm trying to make these so they're easy to function, but they're um, utilitarian as well. Let's look at the back first. This is the back. And I just, uh, this is from the, um, uh, the old library digi kit. And I put in here one of these amazing uh, Will, Will cigarette cards. I just love these things. They always have a good little bit of information on the back. And they're collectible if you like those things. So thank you very much. Um, they are, um, I just put a nice little collection of note papers in here. And I was in there in the thrift store and I found a whole bunch of really cute little notepads. And so I just stamped a word on this one. Here's a piece from the uh, German ads digi kit. And here's another little notepad. So just lots of... You know, you don't always have to have something old or expensive. Um, you can use what you have and uh, just keep your eye out for these things because a lot of people um, have those things but don't use them. Um, so here, this is a beautiful picture. I love this picture of these ladies reading. And they're, they're in deep. Like, they're, they're, they've got plants. You know, they're going places. So I love them. Mysterious. I just thought it was a nice word to stamp there. And here is the Vanilla Rose uh, signature. Uh, pages put in here and I just did a little extra stamping for fun a little inking around so you can use them for uh, full pages you can you cut them and use them in half just stuck uh, some pretty fun things on here here's an old book page I tucked in with um, some stamps uh, the word copy here's the center I did um, staple this together I don't know if you can see that 
But yeah, I just, uh, whoop, there, I throw everything all over the place. Um, I just stapled it in the back together. So it was a very easy construct. Here's an embossed uh, book page. Just highlighted a little bit with some uh, ink. Actually, I think that is um, gilding, uh, like an, a brass colored gilding uh, paste. I'll show you. It was this. What did you grab, Pam? What did you grab? It was this antique paste. That's what it was. Pentart. Okay. Okay. Don't eat it. And probably use a glove. Okay, there you go. I said it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, there's more from the, um, the vanilla rose pages. So these you could easily come along and write on top of. Um, oh, my glue is getting all over. Okay, and I just put a little uh, rubber stamp down here, but the rest is all on the natural page. So you can dress them up. You can put little, I just tore a little piece off of an uh, uh, old newspaper and put it down there. And here's a lovely picture of this guy going through the, I imagine, the Dewey Decimal System. He is trying to find where that book was in the library. Do you remember those days? Were you one of those folks who remembers those days of the Dewey Decimal System and hunting for your books um, as you went through? So I think we have covered everything. So there you go. Do I have, oh, you know who's here. We have a, a case of... Uh, Little Mr. Bumblebee is present, so if, let's see if he wants to say a quick hello. Do you have a quick hello? I do, I have a quick hello. All right, all right, can you tell me what's going on? Okay, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm not there yet. Hold on, here I'm coming. Hello, everybody. Flap, flap, flap. Um, hello, everybody out there in Craftland. I hope you're having a very fun and crafty day. I'm just going to peek at you from afar today. That's right, Mom hasn't got the camera too close. We had words about that. Okay, so apparently I need to go get my nails trimmed and my hair cut again because I'm... Uh, what's that? No, no, okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to the spa again, apparently. That's what she calls it, the spa. I have other names for it, but she calls it the spa. <laughs> Really? You have other names? I do, Mom. I, I do. Um, can't say them on camera. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, Mr. Sassy Pants. Anything else to say? Um, um, I really like red peppers. Not, not hot red peppers. Don't get me wrong. But when Mom's making a salad, when she's being a really good healthy eater and she's making a salad, sometimes she tosses me a little piece and I'm really happy. Carrots? Yeah. Um... You know, tomatoes, meh. Okay, but the, the red peppers, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, really? Okay, well, they're going to put you down. <laughs> we'll talk about those red peppers. You got to eat more kibble, son. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, folks. Um, for everybody who has been here, thank you so much. Um, I truly appreciate you spending time here. I love the fact that we're all a bunch of paper lovers uh, hanging out, just goofing around with our, our paper. And uh, uh, it doesn't get better than this. It really doesn't. Um, so my videos, they come out for everybody who is new. Absolutely big welcome. And uh, I'm going to show you this in another video and we'll maybe uh, make some altered paper clips. I think that might be fun to do. Uh, but uh, um, uh, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And um, my newsletter, if you haven't signed up for the free monthly email newsletter, hey, what are you waiting for? You get a free digital image emailed to you every month and you can print it out and use it at home at will in your artwork any way you like. And and uh, you go are also going to get uh, junk journal tips, updates from me, a note from the bookmaker, which explains um, what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you can, uh, it comes in Word and PDF format, so you can change it, change the words, change the font, make it your own, keep it as is, use it with my blessing. I, I usually tuck that in the beginning of a junk journal. So in case I'm giving my junk journals to somebody who's never encountered, who are, who are these people? Who have never encountered a junk journal yet. I know not of these people. They're out there. <laughs> okay, very well. Um, it can help explain, guide, um, give them ideas of what they can do with their junk journal. Awesome. Okay, everything is talking around here apparently. Um, I have an Etsy shop where I sell my vintage digi kits such as these. And I also, if you do not have a printer at home and uh, buying the vintage, uh, vintage digi kits just doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you don't have a printer, I have a print and mail service. So I will print these out on a premium lightweight cardstock for you. And uh, I do 10 digi kits at a time. So all I need to do, it, all you need to do is buy the print and mail option. You don't need to buy the individual 
uh, kits as well. Just buy the print and mail option and then send me the list of the 10 DigiKit names that you want. And you can shoot that little list to me via uh, email at pam at the .com, or you can message me an Etsy message and just type the first two or three words of each uh, digit and say I want these or if you say I, you, I, I, I can't make up my mind just just pick some out for me Pam please just put surprise me or if you say I really love birds and Victorian I like th general themes can you can you just kind of do it for me absolutely I can totally do that for you too okay and the uh, you get free shipping priority shipping with that as well and um, I also sell fundals which are collections of old papers and things like that so if you are looking for very interesting and old uh, papers um, like old ledger and letters and um, receipts and checks and things like that I have something called a fundal and a fundal comes in a hundred pieces and you are going to get a nice variety of old vintage and antique ephemera also um, a beautiful selection of interesting book pages as well as a nice collection of hand dyed papers that I have I have personally hand dyed and um, I mail you those off uh, priority shipping and uh, there you go a lot of folks are having fun with those so I'm, I'm very happy to know that I'm getting some old paper in people's hands and they can see it feel it smell it crunch it tear it um, honor it poke you know whatever they like to do with it so there you go and I also have um, an Amazon I have a, an Amazon shop we're now in the Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies I have a section for that if you're looking for um, books that a junk journaler might be interested in using. Of course, I can't find one right now, but basically I have a lot of field guides, Edith Holden, um, beautiful flower books, things like that. Maybe you want to use some images um, instead of using stickers or printing things out, it's just easier to tear things out of a book. These are great options for you. And I also highly recommend that you check other sources for prices because you can find the same book for many different prices, all sorts of places out there. And um, I recommend checking eBay, checking... Um, uh, the online booksellers, uh, the ones that always come to mind are Thrift Books and um, Better World Books, but there's there's many out there. There's Abe Books, A-B-E. Um, I think they're in England. Um, but you're going to find all sorts of different prices on the same book. But here, at least, you can look at a bunch of different books, their covers, their authors, their publishers, that type of thing. So you know what you're looking for. Okay, there we go. And I also have a section on craft storage ideas and also Sonny's favorites for his favorite little pet supplies, if you're interested. I also have a Facebook group. Come and join the Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. We're doing the one, two, three, go challenge right now. Um, so what was it this week? It was, um, oh, let me think, let me think. Uh, it was paper <laughs> and it was something else and something else but anyway I give you three things and you got and you just go with your own creativity and imagination and you make something for your junk journal or for something to add to the cover of your junk journal or put on the spine or maybe just an additional embellishment for someday in a junk journal you just never know and um, it doesn't even have to be related to a junk journal but it could be <laughs> um, all right so um, I, all my links if you're looking for them are in the drop down description box below and the videos and if you're on your phone if you touch the title of the video that should open up the drop down description box i do have a new link tree link which if you see that in my description anywhere if you just click on that that will open up all of my links for you so you can find out all the places that i am so that you can uh, follow and come on come on along for the ride if you're looking for the link for the etsy shop or the um, amazon shop and things like that it's all in that one link okay and um, I have a merchandise shop. Hey, if you're um, uh, loving the Create with Reckless Abandon uh, slogan or you are um, uh, the Paper Outpost, if you'd like to see that on a t-shirt or sweatshirt or um, zipped hoodie, mug, tote bag, you name it. There's more things coming, but um, that is what I have right now. And we're going to carry on with that. Um, so, if, and most of all, most of all, Remember, the fun can truly be simple. And I really want to send this idea home that uh, things don't have to be complicated for you to have fun. And that um, sometimes the fun is in making the mistakes and then seeing how you can get out of it. Um, you might end up with something you like a lot better because of the mistake. That happens all the time to me. Uh, so when you see that blop or that splutch or the tear or the, or the whatever it is, just embrace it and look at it with new, fresh perspective, and then create with reckless abandon. Take care, everyone. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.